Hello everyone, my name is Gavin king Ware, and I'm the Global Head of BD Solutions in Huawei's Consumer Business Group. I'll be the moderator for this session with Alexander Salem, Huawei's Global Gaming Business Development Director. Today we are very excited to share growth opportunities with App Gallery. First, Alex will speak to some gaming industry trends and then dive into some of the growth opportunities that await you with App Gallery. Later on, you'll also get to hear directly from some of our game developer partners about their experiences too. Feel free to post any questions you have in the chat during the session. We'll do our best to answer your questions at the end, or we'll follow up with you directly afterwards. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Alex Salem. Alex started his career as a manufacturing industry analyst at BNP Paribas before moving into consulting and then undertaking an MBA. His MBA summer intern project took him to King, which he then joined full time and took on roles covering studio leadership, business performance, and culminating in him becoming their global ads monetization director. Later on, he moved to YouTube and Google as head of EMEA Gaming Partnerships, and then in early 2020, he joined Huawei as global head of gaming partnerships. So Alex, over to you. Thanks, Gavin, and uh, hi, everyone. It's uh, absolutely a delight to be with you today for GDC 2021. My objective today will be threefold. First of all, I will highlight some gaming industry trends. Then I will shed light um, on the value proposition of App Gallery, uh, the App Store of Huawei. And finally, we will hear back, uh, we will hear about some success stories um, with our uh, gaming partners in the last few years. Uh, so let's kick off with uh, gaming trends. Um, as you all know, uh, COVID-19 and the lockdown measures which have been taken in many countries as a result of the global pandemic have transformed entire industries. And gaming is no exception to the rule. Uh, we've seen, uh, for example, more players than ever uh, interacting with games. We've also seen a peak in engagement, uh, meaning that people spent more time than ever playing games. And uh, this translated also into uh, gaming revenue increasing very um, clearly. We can see, for example, on the left-hand side of this graph, um, that gaming revenue represents more than twice the sum of uh, revenue coming from uh, music and cinema, illustrating the fact that gaming is now by far the most pervasive uh, and mainstream form of entertainment. Uh, something which I find also very interesting um, in the last uh, 18 months is how uh, COVID-19 and the lockdowns have completely changed the perception of gaming. Um, you know, years ago, the narrative was that gaming was a quite addictive and not that positive um, form of, uh, of entertainment. And this situation changed completely in the last uh, few months. We've seen uh, a lot of scientific organizations, including the World Health Organization, recommending actually to play games because it's a way to play, um, to, to socialize safely uh, from home, um, which is perfect when there is a global pandemic. And uh, the last illustration for me about how gaming has become um, like very mainstream is actually the interview uh, recently of uh, the Netflix CEO who was asked about what he perceives as the biggest competition to Netflix. And he actually mentioned that in his opinion, it is Fortnite and gaming industry as a whole, which is the biggest competition because that's where the eyeballs are coming from. Uh, in terms of gaming revenue, uh, we can actually see that in 2020, the, the industry has reached uh, a huge size with almost $175 billion of total revenue. Um, as a segment, mobile gaming uh, represents pretty much half of this amount. Um, and it is also by far uh, the fastest growing uh, segment with 25.6% year on year growth. Uh, console is a second segment of gaming with $51.2 billion revenue. Um, and uh, finally, PC um, is third and last segment with 22% uh, of gaming revenue. When it comes to player base, um, the situation is also extremely bright with almost 2.8 billion uh, global gamers, meaning um, people who play games either on PC, on console or on mobile. And what we see on this pie chart is that um, Asia Pacific is by far the biggest uh, player base region with more than 1.5 billion players globally and uh, a player base which keeps growing at 6.5% uh, year on year growth. 
But more interesting than um, the amount of players is actually who the players are. Um, there, there has been a cliche, like uh, maybe a, up to a, a decade ago, that um, the majority of players were male teenagers, basically. And uh, the situation couldn't be uh, you know, different from this cliche. Uh, the reality is that actually everyone is a player nowadays across uh, socioeconomic um, variables, whether it's in terms of age, gender, income, work situation, home situation. Gaming is a behavior, is an entertainment form, which is um, basically uh, for everyone. Uh, everyone plays games, um, whatever their age, gender, income, work situation, and home situation. And something else which has been uh, reshaped and changed um, in the last uh, year or two is the, the, the definition of gaming itself. Uh, for a very long time, we defined gaming as the direct and simple interaction between a player and a game. And actually, uh, nowadays, gaming goes way, way beyond uh, that simple interaction. Gaming is also, uh, you know, we've seen in the last few years more and more in-game concerts, which attract millions of uh, users. Um, we see also more and more people uh, using games as a way to socialize and to have even work meetings. Um, we also see a lot of engagement with gaming content on uh, video platforms such as Twitch or YouTube. 20% of uh, the content on YouTube is actually gaming content nowadays. And we also see uh, other forms of entertainment, such as TV or uh, cinemas, leveraging uh, franchises and brands coming from the gaming world, and even some mechanics coming from gaming. I am thinking, for example, of uh, an episode of Black Mirror called Bandersnatch, which gave the choice to the viewers um, to, to make some scenario um, happen, and which had ramifications on the, the end of the episode. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we also see um, some brands, uh, including in the high fashion world, investing more and more cash into the visibility of their, uh, of their products and services virtually in-game. Uh, for example, um, Louis Vuitton has uh, invested massively in virtual goods uh, recently in games. Another change which is impacting the gaming industry is that uh, over the last few years, we went from a siloed industry where developers and publishers with, were developing mainly for one platform, so either console, PC, or, or mobile. We are going from that situation into a world where basically developers and publishers develop across devices for one player, whether this player is playing on TV, a smart TV uh, with cloud uh, gaming, for example, on smartphone, on PC, or on console. And this uh, will completely change uh, the gaming experience because suddenly um, the requirement for developers is to make sure that the gaming experience is absolutely frictionless when you pass, when you go from one screen to the other. In this very positive um, gaming uh, context, um, what's amazing with us as well is that we see more and more appetite for um, third party uh, stores in the apps distribution uh, markets. Uh, there is more and more appetite for um, more innovation, for more competition in this space, which was characterized by a duopoly for more than 10 years. And as we can see on this graph, uh, the share of the market for third app stores, such as App Gallery, has gone from 12% in 2018 to 15% um, uh, in 2021, and we expect this uh, percentage to keep growing to 17% in 2023. So let's speak now about uh, the opportunity to work with App Gallery, the value proposition of our app store. So the value proposition of App Gallery can be cascaded down into four key pillars. First of all, scale. Uh, App Gallery provides extensive distribution, large market reach, and we have an, an absolutely amazing uh, track record in the biggest market globally in terms of revenue and uh, player base, China. Second pillar is speed. We offer simple integration and easy to use tools and capabilities. Third pillar is discoverability and monetization through um, a wide array of um, top-notch apps and services such as App Gallery, Petal Search, Petal Maps, and Huawei Ads. And finally, fourth pillar is high-touch support, 
um, you know, what characterizes Huawei and App Gallery is the fact that we don't treat all the apps and all the developers uh, with the same with the same lens. We don't um, have a kind of um, one size fits all approach. We try to take into account as much as possible the specifics, the, the key characteristics of local developers. And that's why we have more than 170 uh, offices globally and five developer services, ser service centers offering tailored uh, support. And since we were um, born as an organization, since our creation in uh, 1987, we've managed over um, these decades to build a unique brand uh, globally. This is, uh, for example, is illustrated by uh, a ranking by Boston Consulting Group, the top tier strategy consultancy, which put us, uh, which ranked us as the sixth um, most in innovative company in 2020. In a similar manner, Time, Brand Finance, and Fortune also rank us as one of the best brands globally. Uh, when it comes to our hardware, um, you know, despite challenges in 2020, um, Huawei has kept posting uh, positive revenue growth and delivered device growth across the majority of its product um, categories. And we've also seen a global device user base of 730 million um, strong. So uh, we are still a top three uh, smartphone um, manufacturer, and we, we remain a top two uh, wearable manufacturer, a top three uh, tablet manufacturer, and we also see a huge growth in PCs, a huge momentum. When it comes to the Chinese markets, um, we are also a top provider of smartphone, wearables, tablets, and PCs. And uh, when it comes to smartphones, uh, we can see on uh, the right-hand side here that our market share is uh, by far the biggest in the markets, but it also keeps growing from you know 25% in 2018, it went to 40% in 2020. And speaking about China, I think that uh, it's worth mentioning and to spend a bit of time on the fact that um, we offer to international developers and publishers the unique opportunity um, to penetrate this huge market. Uh, App Gallery has 10 years of app distribution experience in China and is one of the largest uh, Android app distribution platforms in the country. And our catalog, our menu of services to penetrate the Chinese uh, market is uh, really strong. Uh, we offer, for example, policy consulting. We offer uh, product localization to make sure that your games and apps are fit and tailored to the local players' um, preferences. And finally, we also offer localized marketing and monetization services. Uh, but something which also plays in our favor is the breakdown uh, of um, the, 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 the device markets. Uh, as you can see here on this chart, uh, the share of uh, 5G ready smartphones, meaning the, the smartphones which have the technical capability of uh, running on 5G networks, is growing tremendously. From um, 5% in 2020, this share is supposed to uh, increase very strongly to more than 43% in 2023. Uh, and we, we happen to be, um, uh, in 2020, actually the, the leader in this category of devices. And because of this uh, unique track record uh, and capabilities, both on the software and on the hardware side, uh, we have now uh, the chance to be uniquely posit positioned to bring innovation and competition to the app distribution market and to create more value both for the consumers and for the developers across devices also. So whether players play you know, on smartphones, on smart TVs, uh, on wearables, et cetera. And in just over three years of existence, we've managed to um, create huge momentum in uh, this industry. Um, we are now a top three app marketplace globally, and our vision is to continue developing it as a smart, innovative uh, ecosystem that offers unique experiences for consumers. Um, App Gallery continues to be at the forefront of breakthrough uh, technologies, consistently rising in popularity and growth since in, its global launch in 2018. For example, we see here that we've uh, achieved more than 540 million monthly active users, which, which is more than 32% year-on-year growth. 
Um, we have also managed to uh, register, um, you know, um, for more than 4 million um, uh, global uh, developers. And finally, we offer already more than 20,000 uh, games uh, out of China. And I think that what characterizes us uh, versus the competition is also the fact that um, we don't want to treat developers and publishers from our headquarters in a kind of monolithic manner. Uh, we really want to, as much as possible, make sure that we take into account your history, your social and economic background. So that's why we have um, more than 50 uh, countries and regions uh, where we have ecosystem operations organizations. We also have um, three ecosystem labs in Germany, Poland, and Russia. And uh, finally, we have five developer service centers in Romania, Russia, Egypt, Mexico, and Malaysia. Something which also characterizes us um, is the fact that we, we, we bring a, a huge uh, reach and a, a huge diversity in terms of discovery and monetization channels with Huawei ads. Huawei Ads Network allows game developers, both advertisers and publishers to access over 730 million Huawei device users around the world through Huawei's own media, which includes App Gallery, but also Huawei Video, Petal Search, Petal Maps, Browser, and more. In addition to over 11,000 um, third party apps uh, across more than 10 categories. Uh, I want also to mention that Huawei Ads supports uh, all major ad formats uh, from splash to interstitial banners native etc by working with huawei ads um, we we can help you find the best way to reach gamers and extend your reach in other regions critical to your user and revenue growth uh, actually for a deep dive on huawei ads i highly encourage you to join my colleague eva brodigan in the next gdc uh, session starting at 10 50 um, today, Eva will offer you tips to drive growth as Huawei Ads uh, advertiser and publisher and share uh, an exclusive trial bonus to test it out. I also have uh, quite often questions about how quick and easy it is to integrate with HMS. And uh, that's why I wanted to spend a bit of time to address this question. So on average, it takes three days of one person, so three uh, Monday, to integrate one HMS core kit. Uh, however, uh, please make sure to understand that, um, I mean, this time can vary a bit, uh, slightly um, based on the type of game. So typically, a uh, hyper casual or a casual game takes less time to integrate than a hardcore game. Finally, um, I wanted to spend a bit of time um, speaking about our unique uh, partnerships that we have developed over the last three years with our gaming uh, developers and partners uh, in the industry. Uh, over just uh, the last three years, we've managed to attract and retain a unique set of developers and publishers spanning an incredible diversity in terms of geography, in terms of game genre, in terms of um, kind of cultural footprints. And this goes from the most hardcore uh, strategy games to you know, uh, more mid-core to casual to uh, hyper-casual, meaning that bottom line in 2021, any type of uh, gaming persona, any type of player can find what they want uh, on our uh, app store. And um, something which also uh, differentiates us versus the competition is the fact that um, our teams focus on going above and beyond to support our partners uh, beyond the simple integration and onboarding of the games on the App Store. So this is illustrated, for example, by Game Fest, where our teams have rolled up um, our sleeves to make sure that we partner with developers hand in hand to co-market 13 games at the end of 2020, um, 13 games across five geographic regions and 12 markets. And these 13 games represent uh, six game genres from RPG action to uh, simulation and strategy. Um, and the exposure for these 13 games has been tremendous because our campaigns have generated over 600 million digital media impressions from app gallery and third party media. Uh, we've also seen like a tremendous PR um, impact with over 1000 articles across 53 countries. Um, 
Today, I also um, wanted to, um, to invite some of our most successful partners to uh, share their insights about how it is uh, to collaborate with Huawei and App Gallery more specifically, because I think that a lot of our incredible success story is due to um, our amazing partners. So welcome to uh, Playrix and Gamelofts, and thanks a lot for our uh, very uh, fruitful collaboration. We are pleased to join this app gallery session at GDC. As many of you may already know, Gameloft creates games for all digital platforms, App Store, Google Play, Nintendo Switch, App Gallery, and Gameloft operates its own established franchises such as Asphalt, Dragon Mania Legends, Modern Combat, Tension Hunter. Gameloft also provides gaming solutions for carriers and phone manufacturers, such as subscription platforms or cloud gaming offers through Gameloft process solutions. Every month, 70 million unique, unique users can be reached by advertisers in Gameloft games with Gameloft for brands, a leading B2B offering dedicated to brands and agencies to create relevant and engaging gamified content. Gameloft distributes its game in over 140 countries and employs 3,600 people worldwide. Gameloft is a Vivendi company. Gameloft and Huawei collaboration goes way back. We preloaded games on Huawei and on our devices worldwide, organized countless marketing campaigns, developed exclusive ad formats for Huawei within Gameloft Games Inventory. We also organized sport events with Grand Finale in Paris, Barcelona, and Mexico with Huawei as a main sponsor. Eventually, we collaborated on innovative ways to rethink gaming with creative development, such as Asphalt 9 on Huawei Cast Plus and One Up Kids, which transfer your games from your mobile to your TV, turning your mobile into a controller. We see App Gallery as an opportunity for us to reach new audiences and continue Huawei partnership, bringing consumers new experiences. We first partner with Huawei to integrate their billing solution into our titles as a way to provide alternative payment method for our user. Thus, to reach a broader audience, we publish several of our games, Asphalt 9 Legends, March of Empire, Warplanet Online, Dragon Mania Legends, and many more. We integrated Huawei game services and Huawei in-app purchase kits. And so far, we've been pleased with the swift reactivity of Huawei's team to support the development. We also work closely with the Huawei and App Gallery marketing teams to partner on cashback operations, to communicate jointly on social media networks, and to bring innovative or fun to play events for end users. We are also partnering on unique campaigns such as Huawei's Game Fest last winter. We are still in the beginning stages of growth exploration with App Gallery. We are pleased with the collaboration with Huawei and the long-term prospect of the platforms are promising. We can already see some great opportunities with more value for users, special events, exclusive products, and the introduction of innovative features that can bring new ways of seeing and playing mobile games. We are confident about the marketing efforts deployed by Huawei teams around the world to value our games and our brands. And we are looking forward to seeing results from our joint efforts over the next many months. Hi, everyone. My name is Maxim Kirilenko. I am Chief Business Development Officer at Playrix, top mobile game development company in the world and casual segment. We are famous for our games, Homescapes, Gardenscapes, Fishdom and Township, and many other games. Last year, the year 2020, was a turning point for Playrix because we became one of the top three largest mobile game developers in the world. And at the same time, our team expanded to 4,000 people. Both these developments prompted us to search for new growth opportunities. And of course, we started to do so. And as a starting point, we started by looking for new platforms and new partners, which would allow more people to play our games. Because we wanted, at the end of the day, to increase our presence across all major storefronts. And because of that, we started collaborating with newly emerging app stores, such as Huawei App Gallery. For us, the key features of App Gallery is unique player base, which we can't reach through standard app stores. 
And it was important for us to reach this audience. So we became starting to think how to bring our games to App Gallery Store. Here I should highlight that at Playrix, we're very mindful when it comes to choosing partnerships and platforms for our games. And especially if we're talking about games like Gardenscapes and Homescapes, global hits. And in this sense, the Huawei App Gallery team proved to be an excellent fit for us for various reasons. We were very impressed by their approach to working with clients, their result-oriented mindset, history of successful releases, and broad outreach. App Gallery and App Gallery team provided us with phenomenal support and guidance through the entire launch process, from business terms to technical level. And as a result, in November 2020, we released Gardenscapes, the first game in the Scape series, in the App Gallery store. And in April 2021, our players got the opportunity to download Homescapes as well. Our teams, both Playrix and Huawei, had only one month to release Gardenscapes since we wanted to launch the game before the end of the year to give Huawei customers access to our holiday Christmas events. And we did it. We did it successfully in one month. The PR, marketing, business and store teams all supported this global release. And both Huawei and Playrix issued a press release in December 2020 as a part of global promotional campaign. This news that we're bringing Gardenscapes to App Gallery was covered by almost 1,000 media outlets, including Pocket Gamer, IGN, and many others. And of course, additionally, together with Huawei, we said the campaign provided players with access to exclusive cashback deals, which is very important for players and very important to start playing a new game, and especially on a new platform. The Huawei App Gallery team fully met our expectations. We saw great results during the launch, and now we're focusing on building our player base by buying ad traffic. And I think that this is not the end, because we see future of our partnerships, and we are working hard to bring our partnership with uh, Huawei App Gallery to a higher strategic level and bring more games and new releases uh, to the App Gallery store. Huge thanks to Alex, to Playrix, and to Gameloft for all of their insights today. We're grateful too to all of our partners who have published over 20,000 amazing games on App Gallery so far. Great new games are developed every day and we believe great things should be shared with the world. So come and join us. For more information on GameFest, you can download the ebook from the link on the screen or scan the QR code. You can also get in touch with us via email on globalbd at huawei.com. Thanks for your questions in the chat. We'll do our best to answer them now, or alternatively, we'll follow up with you directly as soon as we can after the session. Thanks for joining us and goodbye.